Good afternoon, church. My name is Dennis Sanders, and I'm the pastor of First Christian Church of St. Paul, located in Roseville, Minnesota. Mom, mom, mom. Those were the three words that Tyree Nichols exclaimed on January 7th, 2023, as he was being beaten by cops in Memphis, Tennessee. Tyree Nichols was 29 years old. He was, a, uh, was actually coming home. He had taken some pictures of the Memphis sunset when he was pulled over. Camera footage from both body cameras and street cameras show that Nichols was pulled over and you could see one of five of the cops who were involved had already had his draw, gun drawn as he approached Nichols' car. Nichols was pulled from the car and wrestled to the ground and one of the cops started to call for Nichols to be tased and they yell threats at him. He responds by saying that he was simply trying to get home. He breaks free and he tries to flee. And this is how the news site, The Dispatch, describes what happens next. In the video, officers appear to direct pepper spray and a taser at Nichols, who broke free and ran. Some officers pursued and detained him at a different intersection. He'd apparently fled to within 100 yards of the home he shared with his mother and stepfather. During the ensuing beating, he shouted for his mother, Mom, Mom, Mom. For about three minutes, officers restrained Nichols, kicking him in the upper body and head, striking him with a baton and punching him. At one point, he stood up, still restrained, but collapsed after more blows. Nichols tried to cover his face as officers repeatedly pepper sprayed him, but, the videos, in, but in the videos, he didn't appear to strike back. The police pulled Nichols to a car and propped him up against it with his hands behind him, then stood around joking and discussing the incident. Two fire department medics arrived quickly but the videos don't show them providing, providing aid until about 16 minutes had passed. Three Memphis Fire Department employees have been fired for their conduct during the incident. Nichols died in a hospital three days after the beatings. All my son was trying to do was get home, his mother said. He was two minutes from the house when they murdered him. So here we are again. Instead of George Floyd and Minneapolis, we now have Tyree Nichols and Memphis. Police have again taken the life of an innocent civilian. The difference in this situation is that all of the people involved, both the person that was killed and the officers, were all African American. The events of January 7th, 2023 remind us that we have a problem with policing in America. Race and racism may have a role in this, but at its base, the problem here is one of power. Now, we need our police, and we truly do need them to keep and maintain order and peace but we need our police to act justly and to treat people with dignity. Bob White is the pastor of White Chapel Church of Christ in Memphis. And he reflected on the events, the most, those recent events in the renew.org website. And he believes that we as a nation are dealing with two problems, one of power and one of violence. 
White quotes Henry Nouwen when he says, what makes the temptation of power so seemingly irresistible? Maybe it is that power offers an easy substitute for the hard task of love. It seems easier to be God than to love God. Easier to control people than to love people. The other problem that White says we have is one of violence. And White says, the level of brutality used against Tyree Nichols displayed the lowest possible view of human life. And it seems rather ironic that those that are tasked with keeping the peace and keeping us as a public safe have such a low view of their fellow human being. In Matthew 5, Jesus calls the disciples and those gathered around him to be salt and light in the world. And right at this moment, I want to focus on that light part. He's basically saying that if you are following me, if you're following Jesus, then you carry that light and you must make that light known in the world. And as a church, we are also called to carry that light in the world. And light has some interesting properties because it can reveal what things of God are taking place in the world, where God is active in the world. It can also reveal what evil is taking place in the world. If we are Christians, you, and I carry Christ's light. If Christ pointed out what God disfavored or what God found that was being done wrong, then we are called to point that out as well as bearers of Christ's light. If God is calling for justice, again, as bearers of Christ's light, then we must do that as well. In the wake of the murder of George Floyd, there was hope that there would be something done to reform policing in our nation. And sadly, politics got in the way. And both parties are to blame for that not happening. If we are called as Christians to be light in the world, then the church you and I, as Christians, have to call for better for policing in our nation. As I've said before, we need the police. Contrary to what anyone tells you, we do need them. But we need police that are not drunk on power or violence. Now, I don't know what type of reforms are needed. But what I do know is that no matter who we are as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, we must call for our authorities, the ones that are in authority, to reflect God's justice and not to be organs that excuse cruelty. There is an old saying out there that we shouldn't just curse the darkness. And there is probably a lot of cursing the darkness, and in some ways I don't blame people right now for that. But the rest of that old phrase is that we should light a candle. Because of course lighting a candle changes the view. It shows what good is taking place and also revealing what is wrong. As Christians, I'm praying that we can light and bear Christ's light and be bearers of that so that there can be justice in our land. I want to close with a prayer that Reverend White included in his article. And I pray, again, that we can be bearers of Christ's light in the world that can demand and call for justice. 
He prays. We mourn the brutal murder of Tyree Nichols. His senseless death came through a profound abuse of power. No parent deserves to watch their child be beaten in such a grotesque way. We are thankful that justice has been served in some ways as the officers have been dismissed and charged. But we are prayer, also prayerful that justice must be advanced in other ways. As a nation, we must commit ourselves to a common morality that places love above hate, unity above division, peace above violence, forgiveness above revenge, submission above power, and generosity above greed. This is the only way forward. We pray that God gives comfort to Tyree's family during this awful time. And may all God's people say, Amen. Take care, dear church. Be a light. Be Christ's light in the world. And I will see you soon. Thank you.